Hi everyone. Um, so it's really lovely to have everyone here. Um, we're talking about spring cleaning, which is great. I think over the past couple of weeks, all of our thoughts have turned to getting everything lovely and clean. And I'm really thrilled to be talking to Naomi Hansel, who is the most brilliant argo demonstrator, and who also has the cleanest argo I've ever seen. So I'm going to be talking to her about how she keeps her argo clean and sparkly. Um, even though she spends so much time using it, it's always camera ready. So I'm dying to know her secrets. So if you've got any questions about your own Argo or how to do things, pop them in the comments box and then um, we will be able to answer them as we go through. So don't kind of hold on to them to the end, ask them as we go through. Um, also, we've got a brilliant cookshop promotion, Argo cookshop promotion, which starts, I think now, and goes till midnight tomorrow. Um, and if you, when you check out, you can get 30% off by adding the code CLEAN, sorry, 30% off by adding the code CLEAN30 at the checkout. But um, I think the lovely Georgie has put it up on the screen and has done so much better than I have. So hopefully, if technology is working, and this morning it's been a little bit glitchy, um, Naomi will pop up any second. Morning. <laughs> morning, Laura. How are you this morning? I'm all right, thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Ready for a bit of clean. So this feels a bit unnatural because normally when we start, uh, when we go live on screen together, my cook is already clean to begin with, whereas today I've left it a bit smudgy and a bit not very nice looking. So it feels a bit uncomfortable here actually, but yeah, looking forward to having a little bit of clean. Ah, oh, marvellous. It'll be really, really exciting. Um, so I'm going to go through and ask you some questions and we're going to get comments coming through. We've already got some people saying hi. So hi, Tina. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Denise. Lovely to see you all. Um, so I think I'm just going to go through and ask you some questions and you can show us how things are done. Does that work for you? Perfect. Perfect. Brilliant. Okay. So my first question is one of prevention. Um, I guess... I guess prevention, like anything, is better than cure. So what do we do when we, when something boils over, when we splash our aga, when, when something happens? What's the best way to, uh, what's the best way to deal with those things? Yeah, definitely. So um, prevention with an aga is about, so just clean things up when they happen. Most of the reason that argas get really mucky is actually if, when spills get cooked on. Um, so if you're cooking on the top on your boiling plate, um, and something bubbles over, use a cloth, use a damp cloth or an e-cloth or something like that just to wipe it all off as much as you can. Obviously, the tops of your agar are going to be hot a lot of the time, so be careful. Um, but wipe it off. And the other thing about wiping things is the inside of the lid. So if we have something that splatters on the back of the um, lids and then we put the lid down what happens is all those little bits of splatters actually get cooked on because the boiling plate or the simmering plate is hot underneath. And that's where that comes from. So either just as soon as you finish, before you put the lids down, it's a really good habit to get into. Just give them a little bit of a wipe and then pop the lid down. Um, I've got the famous Arga e-cloth, which we'll use for lots of the cleaning today um, because you can. it's designed to, it's got these special magic fibers. Um, and the way the fibers are split traps the dirt. So you don't have to use any chemicals or cleaning products most of the time when you're using that cloth. And on the whole, they perform better, I think, without it. So that is the magic of those. So just give it a wipe down, pop the lid down. Um, there's a splash guard you can get. I know for people who do a lot of stir frying and things like that, you might really, that might happen a lot. So I don't know whether you have one, Laura. Um, the splash guards we use in the shops all the time. Yeah, and they just hang over the top here. They're black, they're like heavy duty Baco Glide. Um, hang them over the lid and it just helps keep it um, away from the inside of that simmering plate lid while you're, while you're cooking. Um, just, um, yeah, absolutely. So just checking, um, Kerry's just, when you were talking about using the closet, you're talking about using it inside the, hot, the top of the hot plate lid, aren't you? Not on the hot plate itself. Um, so the top, well, I, so there's two kinds, there's two kinds of argus these days. Let's do, I'll do my best not to confuse anyone. If you're feeling confused.com, please just put in the comments and make sure we give you the right information today. I have on off top plates on my argus, so I can turn them off. So actually, if I'm, so at the moment, these are off, so I can happily wipe that with my e-cloth. Um, when your boiling plate is on boiling temperature, um, and you've got crumbs and things on it, 
Um, if you've got spills on your boiling plate when it's boiling and it's really hot, you do want to try and wipe it with something to wipe off the, 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 the as much residue as you can, particularly milk and things, actually, because they yeah. don't like the fast iron. So do carefully use a damp cloth of some sort to wipe off the boiling plate um, and anything that spills that kind of spill over. Um, the, does that answer that question? That does answer that question. Um, uh, absolutely. Um, so what about the inside of the ovens? You, know, you get crumbs or burnt bits or food that gathers on the floor. How do you deal with that? So the good thing about the, the ovens on an agar is because you're roasting ovens, because your ovens are designed to be on all the time if you want them to, and then you can turn them off on some of the models if you don't need them on all the time. Um, the heat from the ovens will basically turn any, any spills or any leftover residue of food or any sorts of things into crumbs and eventually it will just disappear into dust. So all you need to do with the ovens actually is to give them a sweep out every so often. Uh, there's a brush that comes with your agar, but you can replace these if it's gone astray or got used for cleaning the barbecue or something instead. So use the brush just to brush out the inside of your oven. Um, and actually, you can, um, you can, I've seen me hoover out the inside as well, actually, at times when it's cold. So, so you've, got, you've got sort of daily cleaning of little spills and things like that, and then you've got deeper cleaning. And if your cooker is on all the time, you're probably going to wait until your cooker is off for a service before you do your deep cleaning because then it's cooler and it's much easier to handle and actually much, uh, much safer. So, um, yeah, so the inside of the ovens, brush out, don't actually don't really worry. It's, they're not like normal ovens that need cleaning on a regular basis and they won't get mucky. They will just look after themselves, which is one of the beauties of um, Argus. Absolutely. So I've got a couple of questions. Um, so Jane's got a problem where, um, where she finds that because the oven's so hot, when she wipes it over, it evaporates, leaving smears, even when she's using an e-cloth. OK, so in your e-cloth kit, um, so the ones the Argosel and the cookshop have two cloths. You have a green one, which you use wet or damp, and it's got a little abrasive corner for tricky bits. Um, and then the other one is used dry and it's the blue cloth and that's your polishing cloth. So, for example, on the top here, I would use uh, my e-cloth. I would rub it over and then I would use my polishing cloth just to give that a buff. And the same on the enamel, actually, you know, for a quick clean in between um, cooking or at the end of the day or in the morning, wipe it over and yes as you say it will smear as the dampness dries but then polish with the polishing cloth and you'll find that it picks up all those little bits of moisture and then you've got that lovely nice showroom finish yeah okay that's great and then um in terms of so sorry because we've got lots of questions about melting so i'm just trying to because uh, this is usually we cook so this is our first ever cleaning <laughs> thing um, and, uh, and i think we've uh, we kind of think that cleaning is trickier than cooking because we're so used to throwing dishes together um but um so um if can you use on a hot hot plate you can't can you or can't you use the e-cloth on a hot, hot plate that's on, that's hot? Not when it's hot, no. Not when it's hot. Okay, so not when it's hot. So when it's cold, you can do it. So if you've got an on-off burger, you wait until it's, uh, you, you, you turn it off and you just do it then. If you've got an agar that's on all the time, then you wait until it's having its service to give it a really good deep clean like that. Yeah. Um, but if, but, you, but can if you use still... a brush, can't you, on the hot plate? Yes, so um, back to the hot plate for a second. Here we go, here's my brush. So Sorry, if I'm making- all over the place. <laughs> so if I'm making toast, so what, what are the things that make a boiling plate dirty? Well, dry things and spills, I guess. So um, if I'm using the toaster to make my toast, which is the Arga toaster that comes with it, um, I might well have crumbs left on the boiling plate. And it's important that you get rid of those because the next thing I might do is to put my kettle on um, or a pan, and actually, if I've got crumbs on the boiling plate, they're going to stop the good contact with the kettle and the pan, so my pans aren't going to work as well. So use a little brush. So this is a little Arga um, metal brush. 
Um, and that just sits beside the argus. So just brush off, brush the crumbs off, and then you're ready to put the lid down. Um, and that goes if you're making, so we make naan breads and flatbreads and things directly on the boiling plate. Uh, you need to be really quick. But if you get left with some burnt bits of residue or things like that, then just brush them off with the with the brush. You know, don't be a people shouldn't be afraid to really use their argot because they are they're made of cast iron. They're incredibly durable and it's very difficult to actually um, do anything wrong with them. But so use the brush to clean off your toast crumbs. So the other the other way that your boiling plate gets dirty is you put a pan of milk on to make hot chocolate in a hurry, don't you? And it boils over. That's yeah. because we've seen that lots of time. And my children do that and all sorts of things. So that's how they get dirty. So I would take a simple, actually, maybe just a simple damp J cloth or something like that, just a really simple dishcloth and wipe off very carefully, very quickly, the spilled bits. And then just leave the boiling plate to it because it's so hot, it will burn off the residue of that and that will be fine. But just, you know, wipe off the residue quickly if you can. Uh, and then the third reason, actually, as we said to begin with, that your boiling plate gets dirty is you might cook, say, a steak or a stir fry or a casserole or something that's bubbling and it's, it's coming up onto the back of the lid, in which case... Use a cloth, and I would use the e-cloth in that situation. Use a cloth just to wipe the back of the lid before you put it down to stop any of those residues and bits getting cooked on to your boiling plate. Um, I know that actually there's a good trick. If you've got a very, a very uh, sort of battle-worn looking um, lid, um, if you put the kettle on the boiling plate and point the spout at the lid, the steam from the kettle will help just to kind of melt some of that, that dirt and grease possibly that might have built up on there as well. That's a very good trick um, to do too. That is brilliant. We've just got a couple of questions. What about the burn bits on the enamel around the hot plate that won't come off with the e-cloth and burnt bits in all the crevices? Yes. Yes, because it's getting the crevices clean. So we use, um, I use two, the two products that Argo basically sell um, or your Argo specialist sells. So we've got a chrome and steel cleaner and we've got an enamel cleaner. So your, the bits around the side of the boiling plate and your simmering plate um, on most cookers are enamel. So if your e-cloth isn't doing the job on its own or the little corner of your e-cloth, which is good for those sorts of bits too, um, then use use the cleaner like this which is quite a sort of pasty cleaner and you put a little bit onto a little damp cloth and rub it onto the enamel bits and you'll find it gets it sort of clings to the grease and the dirt and actually as you work away you'll find it'll take it'll take nearly all of that off um i know that on the cookers where they're on all the time right at the back here under the lid you do get a bit of a build-up actually in these little corners but just pop um put a bit of paper of the, of the cream onto your cloth and just rub into those little crevices um and that should eventually all come clean that is marvelous um thank you do as i say ask any questions that you've got keep keep them coming um i want to know nay um what about the inside uh, sorry what about the inside of the oven doors so and also the rim around the door because um, yes. sometimes I cook things where I put too much stuff in and it seems to just like explode everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, the one of the so one of the magical things with argo cooking is sort of along the lines of prevention. So you can cook in the ovens as well as on the tops. And I know that all you argo regulars out there know all that and do that all, all at the time. But um, it's one of the things actually with demonstrations for new owners, we try and make sure people understand. So the floor of the roasting oven is what we call your hidden hot plate. And that's because you can cook directly on the floor. You can cook with your pans. You can cook with your Port Marion cookware. You can cook with the cast iron cookware. Um, you, can, you can put pizzas and things and breads directly on the floor of the oven. So it's a hidden hot plate and it's about the temperature in between the boiling and the simmering plate. It's cooler than the boiling plate and it's a bit warmer than the simmering plate. So you can cook, you can you can reduce a casserole, you can, if we're making steaks, I would do the first side in a grill pan on the boiling plate, but then I would turn the steak over and put the pan into the roasting oven 
because that actually helps keep the arg clean. Then I've only got half as much spattering on the top because it's all happening in the oven. And as we said, in the oven, the ovens are so hot, they just, they, they just sort of combust any little bits of food left over. So they're self-cleaning, actually. You really don't need much cleaning at all. So, yes, and actually in that situation, what does happen is that your inside of your door eventually will look like it needs a bit of clean. So um, just be, be brave. Take the door. So we take the doors off to clean them. Now, I have my, um, my ovens are on-off ovens. So I've got two-temperature top oven on this cooker. It's an ER3, and it has a roasting and a boiling, uh, roasting and a uh, baking setting, and it can also be off. So I've had it turned off overnight. I've still got my simmering oven on, which is nice to give me a little bit of uh, heat in the kitchen, uh, but my oven is off. So if you're doing, if you've got an on all the time, Margo, you can still take the door off, but your door will be hot. So use either the gauntlets, um, which are brilliant actually for cleaning, even if you don't use that much for cooking, actually brilliant for cleaning because everything on your argo will be hot because the cast iron's holding on to all the heat, so everything stays warm for a while. Or use a pair of double oven gloves, actually, whichever you prefer, but make sure you protect your hands. Take a door off um, and then lie it on a worktop protected with a couple of old towels, actually. Um, and then we can clean the inside of the lid and then we can clean the bits around the edges. Perfect. That is brilliant. So are you gonna have a go and show ah. us? Yeah, so I've, I have slightly cheated. Marvelous. I've done, in the spirit of all good cookery demonstrations, I've got one that I've prepared earlier. <laughs> So yesterday I did half the door. What's important when you take the doors off, okay, don't immerse them in water, don't put them in the sink because they're full of insulation um, and actually you don't want the insulation to get wet. So just put them on the worktop and clean the surface of them and then make sure they're dry before you hang them back up on the, on the oven doors. The very latest um, Argus, the uh, ER7s and the R7s, she says, somebody might correct me. Um, have removable uh, liners actually, which is totally genius. So you can pop off the inside of the liner and clean that separately without taking the whole door off. Um, so with this, I'm using one of these um, sponges that's got a non-abrasive pad on it. So it's not gonna scratch the inside of my lid. And I've got the Argus stainless seal cleaner but hot soapy water would be fine and a cloth. It depends on how grubby it is, actually. Um, and we've all got our own. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not very, I'm really, I've got quite a high cleaning threshold, which is actually I can cope with, I can cope with things not being sparkly the whole time, but everybody's different. And actually some people like to clean, they would like to do this, you know, clean their door every time they use their Raga. Some people might do it, to be honest, if mine didn't have to be on camera so much, I would probably clean it once every. I think it depends six on the age as well. I think I well, I used to have a really old on all the time oil arga, which was like kind of battered to death and was, uh, and was really quite filthy at times. Um, but now I've got yeah. a new arga, I can't bear it when it's not totally shiny. And I live with boys, so they make a terrible mess of it. And I do actually want it to be really sparkly all the time. So this is amazing. It's just really great to learn all this stuff. Um, I've got yeah. a question from Fran who says, <clears throat> she also has a very old to have an arga, almost 60 years old. And oh, the wow. lid on the simmering plate is permanently battered. Wiping doesn't really marks off unless you use something like Mr. Mus Muscle, which was suggested by the previous owner. Do you have any suggestions? I'm not entirely sure I, whether she means the inside of the lid or the outside of the lid. Um, maybe you could let us know, Fran. Um, but, yes, yeah, if you have any thoughts. But yeah, I so I think, I think inheriting... Inheriting Argus is tricky, actually, because you want it to be pristine. Um, so I think if you inherit an Argus that needs a bit of TLC, you know, when it's give it a really good clean when it's cold. Um, get the Argus cleaners and really attack the grease and things that are built up on the inside, um, or get some specialist help. You know, you can get new you can get new linings for the insides of your lids. Um, you know, that's not a huge investment. You can get them professionally cleaned if the worst came, you know. So contact your Arga specialist um, or Arga directly about spare parts for 
the insides of your lids if they were really desperate. Um, if, it was the inside of Fran's lids that she was worried about, so that's good yes. to know. Yeah. So when the so when I've got um I've got Argus in our holiday lets and actually they get an absolute battering. <laughs> so we do lots and lots of emergency Arga cleaning, probably a bit like your house with your boys, actually, Arga, um, Laura. But um in in the if the worst comes to the worst, then actually I would use like a soap filled pad to clean the inside of the lids. Um, but bear in mind that it will scratch it, but you have to do it in a circular motion and eventually all the scratches join up. Um, but yes, definitely be aware that things like that, the, the more abrasive it is, the more it will scratch it. But sometimes you might find that you prefer to have the scratches all joining up and a nice shiny lid than to have one which is greasy and dirty. Yeah, that sounds great. Like, this is a bit fascinating. So everyone's talking about how often they clean the inside of their doors. And Jane <laughs> cleans hers once a year. Uh, Elaine says, same here. I take them off as I turn it off for the summer so you can clean. But, um, when it, but yeah. Um, and uh, Shirley Zaga's 50 years old. And um, she says that the simmering and warming oven look rusty inside. Can this be cleaned or is it normal? So, um, car, if you if your ovens are off for periods of time, you might get you might get some rust. Or if your oven, if your arg has been off for a long period of time, if the house was empty or something like that. Um, and the recommended treatment for oil is to spray them lightly with some corn oil with a very high. That's an oil that can cope with a very high temperature. Be careful not to use things like olive oil that actually have quite a low smoking point, as we say, because they, they won't, they, they are, the ovens are really hot. You know, your roasting oven is one of the hottest places you can cook. It's about 220 degrees at least. So, um, yes, a little bit of corn oil on any bits of rust um, in the ovens to do with them having been off for a while would be fine. Brilliant. And Ria is from Holland. Hi, Ria. Um, she says, what should she do on the outside, um, on the enamel of the um, of uh, the Arga? And I was going to ask you yeah. that as well, because I have a thing where my dog comes in, like, totally muddy from a walk, shakes all over the kitchen, and then the front of my Arga looks kind of speckled with mud. So how, <laughs> what's the gentlest, best way to clean them? Yes. So actually, I've just turned my door over that's on my worktop in front of me. So you can see because this has enamel on the front of it. So what I use on my enamel. So either wipe it if it's so from the, your dog, Laura, actually, you'll probably get away with just to wipe down with your e-cloth, rub it gently on any, any little spots or splashes or anything like that. Yes, damp. Yeah, always use the e-cloth damp and always okay. use the polishing cloth polishing to dry. Cloth dry. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So the great. green one, green one is the damp one. And then actually uh, take your blue polishing cloth and give that a polish. And it will go from that very smeary, slightly unpromising look to then showroom sparkle. Um, and you can do that all, all over the front, all over all the nooks and crannies. If it needs, if you've got, so on mine, I've got a little mark from something that needs a bit more oomph. So take the enamel cleaner. And these are, it's a lovely thick paste. They're really good. Take a little damp cloth and just put the cloth, as with all cleaning, actually, put your cleaning materials onto your cloth rather than directly onto your cooker and just give that a little rub. It's really satisfying. It's like toothpaste consistency. Um, give that a little rub and then wipe that with damp cloth, wipe that off, and then give it a polish. Ah, oh, that's great. And that that will be great. That's what I'm doing. So that me. is, yeah. And you can do that over all of it, actually. Yeah. Any bits of condensation, if you've got steam or condensation or things like that, if you've cooked something very steamy in your hot oven, uh, and when you open the door, you get a big wish of condensation, just wipe that off the top immediately if you can, actually, because that will, um, you don't want to run the risk, anything will mark over time. But that's my door. So we've done the door on the inside, all nice and shiny. I've got the odd batter, the odd sort of like little... Um, memory of a a tray or things like that which is part of what your arga develops over time they become their own cookers don't they so um it's lovely to keep them shiny and nice and then the other side we did with the enamel cleaner um and the um polishing cloth so that's ready to go back on you've got little washers in here on your door um posts that slot in you don't need to um, there's no unscrewing needed you just lift them off but there are two little washers 
um, make sure on some models they can fall off. So make sure they're not missing or falling off. And if they are missing, you can get spare ones as well. Great. Brilliant. Um, so, oh, so I've got lots of questions coming in. Um, oh, okay. So I think Ria, sorry, it's always difficult um, in text, but I think um, I think Ria might mean that the top plate, so so not the hot plates, but the top plate of the Aga needs um, needs a good polish. Um, but presumably that's the same. The lids. Uh, no, the, the top plate, so um, the enamel around or, or, or whatever is around your hot plates. Yes, so my cooker looks a little bit different because I've got an ER3 and I've got um, cast iron resting areas, but on um, conventional argus or, or on the ER7 or the R7, you have enamel all over the top, and it's exactly the same as the doors. That's exactly the same material, so that's vitreous enamel, so use the enamel cleaner, a little bit on a damp cloth to rub into any particularly greasy bits, um, wipe it down with an e-cloth and then polish with a polishing cloth. Perfect, that's really great. Um, and then I have a question from Alice who says, we've ordered the new ER34i, which means I won't be having all the ovens on all the time. Can I wipe the doors on the inside after every use? And sorry, I missed this, but what should I used to do this, join the video a bit late. I think a lot yes. of people have joined the video late. And, I, and what I would say is this, this video will be saved so you can watch it again. And it will be saved here and it will also be saved on Arga's Instagram TV, IGTV. So, um, yes, yeah, so you can watch it and slow things down and watch all the amazing things they showed us. <laughs> but, yes, so the ER3, so that's pretty much the same cooker that I have. You'll find the, um, yes, you can wipe down the inside of the doors when you finish cooking. Um, and that's totally fine. Uh, th they'll be quite hot actually like on a conventional lager that's on all the time so yes you can wipe the down but it will be hot to do it but what to do is the times when your cooker is off so if you run your hot oven either on the timer or you turn it off at night and turn it on for cooking during the day then clean it in the morning when it's cold like mine is actually um, and you know it's incredible so I with the modern cookers where you can choose which ovens you have on and off at the moment, it's a bit of a blustery old March day in Suffolk here. And I've got my warming oven on my storage cupboard. So the warming oven at the bottom and then the storage cupboard, which borrows a bit of heat from that. And I'll leave that on all the time because I use it to just generally have somewhere to put supper to keep warm while we're ready to eat. Um, I have the simmering oven on 24 seven at the moment because I need a little bit in the kitchen, heat in the kitchen all the time. And I use the simmering oven so much for cooking off and start things off on the top and then put them into the simmering oven. So I don't need the hot oven on all the time. But because it's because we've been cooking so much, because we've been at home and my kids have only just gone back to school, I've had the roasting oven on at least most of the day, um, but it comes on on the timer in the morning and it turns itself off at night. So it's never really on overnight. But last night, well, this morning it didn't come on because actually um, I wanted it cooler so I could show you the door cleaning and things. Um, and it's really chilly in the kitchen. So I've got a little bit of background heat, but I wish I had the daily oomph of heat that I normally have. So, yes, the, the, the enormous advantage of the on-off argos and the, the ovens you can control separately is you can keep them all so much cleaner because you get an opportunity every day, really. And then the tops I turn off. Well, I'm not using them, so I would turn them on to make breakfast and turn them off again, and then they're cool enough to clean mid morning if I want to give them a quick wipe, a proper wipe down. So you don't get the same build up of greasy bits as well. Perfect, great. I've got a few more questions for you. Um, somebody, um, oh, I've lost it now. Has ah, uh, uh, um, Catherine has asked whether um Argus cleaning products can be used on the Rayburn, and I think that that's that they absolutely can, can't they? Yes, they are Arga. They're suitable for Arga and for Rayburn, actually. So they're, they're made of the same. So the shiny bits on your Arga are stainless steel, um, your, the lids and your rails and things like that. And then the coloured bits and the black bits are vitreous enamel. So whatever cleaners you use, make sure that they are appropriate for that. But Arga range, we have the enamel cleaner for Argas and Rayburns. We have the chrome and steel cleaner for Argas and Rayburns. And those two along with my brush for the top plate for my toast crumbs and my e-cloth, my green one. Uh, green one use damp, my blue one use dry between those, those two and they come in their little pack together. That's my essential Arga cleaning kit really, that's as complicated as it gets. 
Great. Okay, I've got a couple more questions for you. Um, do ice cubes work on the simmering plate to help clean the lid? Oh, I see. To create a bit of steam, possibly. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit like the kettle thing, isn't it, I guess, in a yes. way. Whereas the kettle is quite controllable because you can move the spout around, can't you? Whereas maybe ice cubes, not so much. Um, well, the kettle won't boil it. So while we're, all, while we're talking about top plates, before I forget to answer, before I get to tell you this, because this is a really good tip, and I've forgotten about it because we don't use it all the time. If your argot is on all the time, remember, Laura, like ours used to be, and you want to give the boiling plate and the simmering plate are clean. And so we know how much heat you feel when you lift the lids on an argo that's on all the time. So it's a really good trick to take your shelf and put it across and then put your cold plain shelf above. Um, because what that does, it acts as a bit of a heat shield. So if you're working on the inside of the lid, it just helps protect you from some of the heat of the boiling plate. You might want to put a couple of little cork mats on the corners where your shelf comes into contact with the enamel so it doesn't scratch it. But that's a, that's a good trick um, for people that wanting to give it a little clean when it's on all the time. So I've got my, my grid shelf from my oven and I've got the cold plain shelf on there as well. And that just helps. And obviously using, um, using the gauntlets when you're cleaning is handy. I've seen me put rubber gloves on over the top of the gauntlets actually, so that I can actually clean and keep my hands protected at the same time. Yeah, that's great, brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna, we don't have much time left, so I'm just gonna whiz through a few more questions. Um, Ian's asked, can I remove the stainless steel cover on the door of my ER7 to clean? And the answer is yes. yes isn't it? Yep. Yes. Yep, great. Um, Viv, Viv has asked, can you use the brush with the handle on the plates? Um, do you know, it's made of the same material. They're, they're slightly different. I would say the, the little oval brush is slightly bendier than the oven brush. So you won't, it won't be as effective because it won't quite brush the, the crumbs away. And there's not quite so many um, metal prongs. Bristles okay, great. is the word. Brilliant. Um, uh, Jane's made a brilliant suggestion um, about um, a cover, a protective cover. We won't go into that now, but we will definitely pass that on to the people in charge of those things. Um, is, ooh, is there any knack of taking the handles off the lid of the Arga to clean? They get dusty and greasy. The Arga is over 65, it's over, over 60 years old. I would say that would be something to speak to your Arga specialist about. Do you agree, Nay? Yes, you can take the whole lids off, actually. You just need to release the back with an Allen key. Uh, but again, speak to your specialist or your Arga, um, Arga helpers, Arga people. Um, Brilliant. Um, I wonder... So the inside, is it, was it the metally bit? Was the coily bit? I think so, I yeah. Wonder. So you can, you can actually just put a cloth inside there and just rub as you go along. It's quite satisfying. It reminds me of Zebedee out of the Magic Roundabout because it's in a coil. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, the um, Sue, Sue, no, Elaine has asked, any tips for the fan vents at the back? They get quite dusty and greasy. Uh, so on where you've got a fan that sits above, you can lift got, yeah, whole, you, yeah, you can often lift the whole thing off, actually, and clean it. But it's made of enamel. I think it's made of enamel. So use the enamel cleaner and just work away with your e-cloth in between or with a damp cloth and your enamel cleaner and then give it a polish. So I think it's made, it's the bit that's made of enamel in the same way as the rest of the cooker. Brilliant, that's absolutely great. So we've got um, just a couple more minutes. Um, Marilyn's asked, can you explain the, explain the use of the razor blade scraper on the top plate, please, on a traditional on all the time agar? Yes, so the razor blade scrapers, um, you can't, we, unfortunately, you can't order them from Cookshop because they can't send razor blades in the post. But they are jolly handy. If you're, um, so they, they belong in the sort of deep, clean end of your agar cooking, I would say. If you've inherited an agar that hasn't had that much TLC or you've got a really big buildup of dirt and grease over time, you use them on the enamel very carefully, but um, 
so that they just simply plane off your bits of dirt and grease. Um, so if it's got a really thick or really difficult, but be very careful not to dig in when you do it. You want to do it very flat. So it literally just takes off that grease. And you'll find that when you get down to the final layer, use the enamel cleaner because that will, it sort of bonds with the bits of grease and it just lifts them off and makes them go away. So you, you're, when you put the enamel cleaner on, it goes into this funny sort of, well, it's a kind of a white paste, this funny sort of white paste. And it looks worse than it did to start with. Just then wipe that off with a damp cloth, give it a wipe with an e-cloth and a polish with a polishing cloth. And eventually you'll see your beautiful shiny enamel appear underneath from the grease. But it, it can take a bit of doing if it's got a big build up over time. Brilliant. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions. A couple of things just to say. <clears throat> the first thing is if you want to buy anything, um, that Naomi has mentioned, uh, any of the cleaning products or the e cloth you can do so on the Argo Cookshop website. And until midnight tomorrow, there's 30% off all cleaning products. That's midnight tomorrow. I think we had a little glitch on our cafe in April, not March, a little while ago. Um, that is the little gremlins getting into the system, or maybe us all wishing our way out of lockdown. Um, but yes, so use the code CLEAN30, all in caps, um, at, at the checkout, and you'll get 30% off. Um, it, Naomi mentioned the, the razor cleaner. Obviously, once all the shops open, I presume you'll be able to go in and buy them. I think they just need to check that you're 18 to be able to buy something like that. So, and obviously um, they can't send things through the post until they know. Um, so that would be great. You've been an amazing audience. I've learned loads. Naomi has ever has been amazing. If you want to see more about Nay's cooking adventures, you can follow her on Instagram at Nay? Oh, Nay, uh, <laughs> Nay, Hans Nay Hansel underscore inspiring cooking. There you go. I'm loving these new captions. And thank you, huge thank you to Georgie, who's been ably managing the cameras and the captions and everything else. Um, if you've got any suggestions of things you'd like to see us cover on these lives, then just pop something in the comments box because we're always um, interested to hear what you'd like to see. I um, hope you've all found it helpful. And um, I'm off to clean my aga now. Lovely to see you, Nay. <laughs> you too. Take care.